Hi everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. Today we're going to be learning more about polar adaptations and this lesson is the second in a set of three lessons about wildlife of the polar regions and in this lesson we're going to look at the whales and dolphins of these regions and their adaptations to this harsh environment. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. So from lesson one of polar adaptations, we know that the polar regions are located around the North Pole or the South Pole. And these regions are within polar circles. So either the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. And despite being very, very cold and really windy, they are really rich in wildlife and a huge variety of different species live in these regions. So let's talk about the water temperature in the Arctic and in the Antarctic. Well, as you probably guessed, it's very, very cold. Both the Arctic Ocean and the Southern Ocean around Antarctica are around the freezing point, so about zero degrees Celsius. And that can be even lower to about minus two degrees Celsius. Absolutely freezing. And you might wonder why water at minus one or minus two degrees Celsius is not ice. Why is it still water? Because seawater contains salt, it freezes at a lower temperature than fresh water, which turns to ice at zero degrees Celsius. Even though whales will be swimming around ice edges and can frequently be seen swimming amongst ice packs, whales wouldn't be able to live in areas with thick ice covering them. Can you think why? It's because they need to come up to breathe without ice stopping them from doing that. So why don't these animals, like whales, not freeze to death? Humans would freeze to death in a couple of minutes in these waters. Well, they certainly don't wear a hat and gloves to keep them warm. Instead, there are two ways in which animals living in polar regions can cope with the cold. They can either adapt or migrate. First of all, what is adaptation? Well, it's the process where an organism or species becomes better suited to its environment. So for example, you might know that camels are perfectly suited and adapted to the desert environment and that polar bears are amazingly adapted to live in the Arctic. And we will talk more about polar bears in the next lesson. So animals that are adapted to the polar regions will stay mainly in these cold areas all year round. Those of you that have listened to our migration lessons will know all about migration. And migration is the seasonal movement of animals from one region to another. And there are a huge variety of different species of cetaceans remember that word meaning whales, dolphins and porpoises, living in polar regions. All cetaceans are adapted for living at sea. And one thing that all cetaceans and other marine mammals have, like this walrus, is blubber. Remember, marine mammals are warm-blooded, so they need to keep the inside of their bodies really warm at all times. A whale and other marine mammals' body temperature is the same as a human's, at about 37.5 degrees Celsius. And the blubber helps their bodies to stay at this warm temperature. It's like a thick layer of fat underneath the skin layer. And the species that live all year round in these cold polar regions have the thickest blubber. So you can see this walrus here, even though its body is really warm at 37.5 degrees Celsius, outside it's minus 10 degrees Celsius, and that blubber acts as a warming protective shield all around the walrus's vital organs. Species that live in warmer waters also have blubber, but they'll have much less blubber than the species that live in the Arctic or the Antarctic. As a comparison, the common dolphin on the left here, a temperate species, is quite slim and elegant looking as it inhabits warmer water. So it doesn't have a huge blubber layer. It's not as thick as other species. Compared to the white-beaked dolphin though, the common dolphin looks very slim. White-beaked dolphins are a large stocky dolphin due to it living in cold water. 
It has a much thicker layer of blubber, giving it a more rounded, robust appearance. Another way that cetaceans and other marine mammals keep warm is by having a low surface to volume ratio. Animals lose heat from body surfaces that are in contact with the surrounding water or air. So if you imagine swimming in cold water, the water that touches your skin makes you really cold. And reducing this contact reduces heat loss. Increasing the surface area increases heat loss. So mice and elephants have very different body sizes and different body volumes, which is basically the amount of space occupied by their body matter. So basically all their insides. So relative to their size, the mouse has a much higher surface area where heat could be lost to the external environment in comparison to its body matter. If both the mouse and the elephant were exposed to cold weather, they would both eventually lose heat. But the mouse would lose heat much faster because a greater percentage of its total body volume is being exposed to the cold weather. But a good example is an elephant, and elephants try to increase their surface area by having huge ears. And this is so that they can easily lose heat because they live in really hot areas of the world and sometimes they need to make sure they can cool down. But remember, whales are not trying to lose heat, they're trying to keep heat, they're trying to conserve it. So in order to conserve the heat, it is more beneficial to have a larger volume compared to the body surface, so there are fewer opportunities for heat loss. This helps to explain why marine mammals tend to be so large, as it's really beneficial for them to have the smallest surface area in contact with the freezing cold water. An animal like a whale would not be able to live on land. If it did, it would simply get crushed by its own body weight due to gravity. So this is another reason why whales can grow so big because they don't have to deal with the full effects of gravity and so they can keep themselves nice and warm. So can you remember what the largest whale is? Yes, it's the blue whale, a huge animal with a low surface to volume ratio. So they've got lots of body mass, but not much body surface, touching the water, cooling it down. Okay, so now let's look at some species in more detail. Here we have the beluga or the white whale, but do you think the beluga adapts to life in the Arctic or do you think it migrates? The beluga is perfectly adapted to live in cold Arctic waters. Firstly, they have a thick layer of blubber around their body but they're also very camouflaged, so they blend in with the ice. Why do you think belugas need to be so well camouflaged? Well, belugas will frequently swim around ice packs and amongst ice sheets, looking for breathing holes, of course, as they go. And they do have a predator on the ice, and that's the polar bear. And the polar bear will await at breathing holes, waiting for belugas to surface to breathe, the polar bear knows they have to come up to breathe. The polar bear will then swipe at the belugas with their huge paws to try and kill them to eat and that would be a great meal for a polar bear and its family. Belugas often have huge scars on their heads and backs from polar bear claws. Belugas also have no dorsal fin Dorsal fins would cause extra heat loss by increasing their surface area. They do have a really tough dorsal ridge though, which along with their head can be used to break ice to create breathing holes. And just a few fun facts for you about the beluga. Belugas are actually born dark grey or brown in colour. They turn white as they get older, sometimes taking between three and eight years to reach their adult coloration of bright white. They're also called the canaries of the sea due to the wide variety of echolocation sounds they make. And did you know that belugas have a flexible neck? They can move their head up and down and side to side. Not many cetaceans can do this. They're absolutely incredible animals. 
Okay, on to the next species, the bowhead whale. Do you think it adapts to its environment or do you think it migrates? The bowhead whale adapts to the Arctic environment and it's called the bowhead whale due to its head shape, which looks like a bow from a, from a bow and arrow. It uses this hard, huge head to crash through the ice for breathing. And the bowhead whale is also amazingly adapted to the Arctic environment. First of all, they actually have the thickest blubber of all cetaceans. That can be up to 70 centimetres thick. Why don't you measure that out and imagine having a layer of blubber that thick all around your body. They also have no dorsal fin, just like the beluga. They also have really long baleen plates. These can be two meters long and they need those baleen plates to filter out tiny bits of plankton and krill when they're feeding. Bowhead whales are the only baleen whale to stay in Arctic waters year round and they're the only baleen whale to have their calves in the Arctic as well. Bowhead whales are also extremely slow growing. The bowhead whale doesn't actually reach adult size until it's 40 to 50 years old. It's thought that by growing so slowly, this helps them live in really cold waters, but we aren't really 100% sure why this is. Bowhead whales are also the longest living mammal on the planet. They can live over 200 years old. You might be wondering how we know this. Well, in 2007, a bowhead whale was found with a harpoon lodged in its skull. Scientists were able to age the harpoon to about 200 years old. But they might even live longer than this. So as I just mentioned, they don't really reach adult size until they're about 40 or 50 years old. And a whale wouldn't have been hunted if it was a small baby whale. So perhaps this was an adult whale of 50 years old before hunters tried to kill it. This whale lived on with this harpoon stuck inside its skull. So the bowhead whale can probably live much longer than 200 years old. Scientists have also been able to age amino acids in a bowhead whale's eyes to estimate that they can live over 200 years old too. Think about something that happened in history 200 years ago. It's amazing to think there's a whale out there who has lived through that and all the historic events over the last 200 years. So what about the humpback whale then? Do you think it's adapted to stay in cold waters or do you think it migrates? The humpback whales avoid the harsh winters in the Arctic or the Antarctic by migrating to warm tropical waters to breed and have their calves. They then travel back to the polar regions to gorge on food during the polar region summers. And here we can see a migration map of the humpback whale. If you'd like to learn more about migration, have a look at Orca Lessons 4, 5 and 6. The next is the unicorn of the sea, the narwhal. Do you think it adapts or migrates? The narwhal is adapted to life in the Arctic. Again, they have a really thick blubber layer and their mottled greyish colour also helps them to be camouflaged. But what about their tusks? The tusks that narwhals have are actually an elongated canine tooth and is mainly found in males, though around 15% of females also have a tusk, but that's usually shorter. Did you know that around one in 500 male narwhals actually have two tusks? But the females without tusks survive very well without them, and we're not entirely sure what their tusks are for. Some scientists say they are for impressing females. Other videos have shown narwhals using their tusks to hit their prey to stun them, making them easier to catch. There's no evidence of narwhals using their tusks to spear fish. They might even use their tusks to make holes in the ice for breathing. Okay, what about the grey whale? Does it adapt or does it migrate? The grey whale migrates and the grey whale is the mammal that migrates the furthest. Okay, what about the minky whale? This is a small whale about 10 metres long. Do you think it adapts or migrates? The minky whale migrates, but it's nowhere near as far as the other larger 
baleen whales. What about the largest species of dolphin, the orca or the killer whale? Orcas are adapted to their environment. They have a thick layer of blubber around their body to keep them warm. They do travel hundreds of miles every day to find their prey, but they don't really migrate. They have also adapted to their food source as well. For example, killer whales in Antarctica form a big line and they swim up to an ice pack that has a seal on it and this creates a wave and that wave washes the seal off the ice pack into the water to make it easier to eat. Okay, so to recap, we know that some species of cetacean adapt to the cold environment of the poles, for example the bowhead whale, the narwhal and the beluga, but other species of cetaceans migrate to avoid the coldest temperatures at the poles, for example the humpback whale. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about the other Arctic and Antarctic wildlife that is adapted to the harsh environments at the poles. Thank you so much for listening to another Orca lesson. Please visit our website to find out more about Orca and our wonderful charity. It's www.orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you.